Imagine a small camper company making a colossal mistake, but it's a win for you. We're talking 50% less than these same trailers cost over a year ago. And I'm astonished that more of you are not talking about this. So what's the mistake? Instead of running with the small guys, they joined the large RV network. We're gonna take you on a tour of this trailer and reveal to you the crazy prices you can snag right now on this model. And as usual, stick around as we'll be sharing the three things we like about this trailer and the three things we think could be improved. My name is uh, Truls. I'm the CEO of uh, Hero Camper. We are a Danish company. This is Lonnie, our uh, sales rep in the States. And uh, the story behind we are here is because that Lonnie, he's in back in 17, I yes, believe so. 2017. You were in the market for a teardrop trailer and you were looking for something which was well, well made, high quality and with no water penetration, isn't that right? Yes. And you started looking overseas? So in 2017, I had experience with uh, camping trailers and RVs and I wanted something different and I couldn't find something with the quality that I wanted. And so I know that some of the great brands come out of Europe, uh, Mercedes and BMW. So I looked to Europe for a teardrop trailer and I discovered Hero Camper. And they were selling uh, a very popular trailer in Europe. And so I bought the first one, brought it to the United States. And now here we are, five years later, we're shooting to be one of the best quality teardrops on the market in the United States. So let's start with the, with the cabin of the Hero Camper. The whole cabin is made out of a FRP. If a P pen is a, it's a gel coat on the outside, it's a glass fiber, and then you have a PU foam in between, and you have the same on the, on the opposite side, on the inside. So it's, it's built like a boat. It's the same as a, as a, as a, bo as a boat. Uh, the reason why we build it like that is that because it has a really, really high insulation degree. It works really, really well in summer and winter, keeping warm out or keeping warm in. Um, even the bottom plate, which is a little bit thicker than, the, than actually the, the side panel, uh, it's also made of the same material, so we ensure that we don't have, have cold coming up from, 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 the, from the bottom. Everything is bonded together with, the, it's, it's glued together and screwed together, and then there's aluminum profile around the, around the corners for the screws. As you can see here, this is, a, this is a rolled, one rolled piece of aluminum profile all the way. Uh, we have integrated the rear lights, that was really a, a big job for, of ours. This is a patient design. Uh, which is something we are really, really happy about uh, and satisfied about because it gives the whole back end a really, really clean look when you're driving round, n n down the road. It's, you, you, can, you can see from a very far distance that's a hero camera driving. It looks, it looks awesome. So that's, that's, that's the cabin. Then we, we go with the, all the metal parts. Everything you see here is aluminum. So like a fender here is aluminum and has this uh, powder coating which is really, really rough. So scratches is hard to, 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 uh, to get on, on, that, uh, on that surface. Like the fender here, everything is made in one piece. As you can see, it's bended in one piece. We do that because, yeah, it's hard, and we like that, we like that to not show weldings. We are a Danish manufacturer, and we like this minimalistic design. We want we want the, the appearance of the trailer has to be clean. That's like our, our main purpose. So the wheel is our own designed wheel, and uh, we uh, we we put on a uh, a off-road truck tire on the wheels. The chassis which we either use uh, Knot or Alco, German manufacturers, as a hot dip galvanized steel chassis. It has a surge brake, just like you see on a boat trailer here. That's pretty standard in Europe that you use the, the surge brake. So on the axle, you have a torsion suspension on the axle underneath. The torsion suspension actually works uh, individually, so you have like an individual suspension here. One of the main benefits of the torsion suspension is that you actually have less moving parts. You only have the, the damper that sits outside. You have closed wheel bearings, so you don't need any maintenance on the, on the wheel bearings. And the, and the chassis itself is actually a little bit over dimension. So the weight of the trailer is actually less than what the chassis can take. The chassis can take way more than, than what the trailer weighs. The ladder here is for going into either the rooftop tent or just to entering the roof rack, depending whether you choose the unit with or without the rooftop tent. The roof rack can take 1,100 pounds static weight, so it will carry most of what you need to for your travel. The stabilizers, uh, as we have here, is the same material, aluminum material, with, uh, with the powder coating, and it's very simple. It's just uh, just works on a manual, no uh, no uh, no automatic or winding uh, function. It's extremely simple. Could you use this to level the trailer? Yeah, yeah, you can, you can actually. Then moving back to the galley, the galley we have here is very simple. Stainless steel kitchen plate, 
with, uh, with integrated sink. So it's easy to clean, easy to maintain. All the, all the drawers is, uh, is uh, aluminum with stainless steel sliders and, uh, and, and, and a soft close function. Uh, the handles, also rough handles, actually taken out of, uh, out of, out of boat, uh, marine industry as well. In the middle drawer here, we actually do, for the EU model, we, uh, we do a compressor AC or compressor cooling box here. And we also will do that for the US market. Underneath here you have 12 volt and you have 110 volt. So if you want to put in your own uh, cooling box, it's also possible. Then we have eight gallon fresh water tank and a small drawer here as well. 110 volts, USB plugs and uh, 12 volt plugs and lights in the kitchen, of course, as well. So the cool thing about this hat, you are kept away from the sun and, uh, and you can actually prepare your food here uh, in, in, in the dry if it's rainy. We also do come with a, with a tent for European models, uh, which will be available later here in the States as well, where the tent comes out quite far behind, so you can actually sit inside uh, to, to eat if you want that. It's mostly used in the uh, northern part of Europe because it's, it's cold there. So the trailer also comes standard with the, with the tool awning. Um, this is the 2.6 tool awning, 2.6 meter. So in the front here we have our what we call a gas box, but basically it's just for storage. It's quite big storage uh, box for uh, whatever you need. In the front here we have a solar panel, 140 watt. Um, this solar panel also we took inspiration from the marine. This is normally something that you do on a, on a deck on a boat. You, it's made for stepping on it. The reason why we do it is because it's flexible and it, it doesn't need the great background cooling like other solar panels, so we can put it directly onto the panel. Um, on the gas box here, we on the side we have an extra plug. If if one needs to have extra capacity of uh, solar, then you can add a foldable solar panel here, and it will uh, you you will increase your capacity. Going to the to the door before we step inside, the windows here. Yeah, we have just have a normal storage net here in the door side. We have the windows that can be opened, of course, and it does have the the blindfold and it has the. I think you call the mosquito net as well. Then the cabin inside, very basic minimalistic design. We have focused, we have, we have focused a lot on this Scandinavian uh, design where you have a lot of headroom, you feel spacious although you're in a, a tight cabin. It's a, it's, a, it's a queen size bed with just like memory foam uh, mattresses. So you sleep really, really good in this. We have um, like LED lights that can be uh, colored along the side here and we have the normal uh, lights on the back and on the top here as well. Um, it's really cool in the evening when you when you turn off the normal light and just set a cool setting with the with the uh, with the colorful lights. It, it creates a good atmosphere inside here. Fabric on the side with uh, this leather strip, brown as also on the top here. Um, on the back, you see there are two squares that is a little bit raised from the background. That's because in uh, we we do offer a uh, version where we have a diesel heat. Installed the diesel heat would would sit behind one of the doors in the kitchen and it would it would blow out the air behind those two, so you don't notice that. Cabinet doors here for for extra storage and rooftop window which can be opened and also the same as the side window with blindfold and mosquito net. So is there a fan in this? No, no fan. Just like the AC. That would be it. And then, uh, of course, the, the diesel heater we have actually has a fresh air fan. So that would be fresh air blown. If you don't want a heat function, you can just have the fresh air coming out from behind. But you find primarily just venting across the two doors is exactly. enough, right? Exactly. Like if, if I sleep in this with, with, my, with my family, my two small boys and, uh, and my wife, actually, we just have the top window open. And that, that's like in the winter days, that's, that's enough. Um, but if you open the windows, then you have sufficient um, air coming through. Behind the backrest here, we actually have on the US models here, we have a, an AC unit that can be taken out. It takes approximately two, two minutes just to unscrew the finger screws here. You can take it out, you can take it to the rooftop tent if you like so, or you can take it out and use, use this back behind here for storage if, if that's what was needed. The AC runs out of the 110 volt, so you, it will require shore power, or we do, invo in, we do uh, offer an inverter pack as well so it could run off the inverter pack. On the left side here you see the solar panel charger and you see a 10 amp, 10 amp 
uh, battery charger. This is the Bluetooth module for the for the solar panel, so we actually have Bluetooth connect connectivity. And then we have all the electric parts here, 110 volt and and 12 volt separated here in the um, in the panel. The first pro is just the effortless braking. I love that the trailer comes with trailer brakes, but it doesn't require you to buy an expensive brake controller or have something gaudy in the front of your tow vehicle. And that's because it has a surge brake controller, which means essentially it uses the momentum of the trailer to determine when it stops. Now, while this is a great add-on, surge controllers, electric brake controllers, they both have their pros and cons, and that's something I'll save for another video. The second thing that really caught my attention was the composite FRP panels. In layman's terms, these panels are made up of 12 layers. The core is a combination of styrofoam for insulation and PVC for strength. Then additional layers of resin and fiberglass are added, and then just top that off with a gel coat. So why do I like this? Essentially, this will make the trailer more durable, it will prevent mold and mildew, and will have excellent thermal insulation. Meaning it will take very little resources to keep the cabin warm and dry. Third thing I really like about this trailer is the attention to detail. The seamless welds, the lighting, the fact that they put a seat belt that goes over the bed to hold cargo in transit. Sorry, I didn't show you that part. It's those little details that tell me if they're going to put the time into the little things, they're really gonna do a good job on the big things as well. Plus what many companies consider add-ons, Hero Camper includes these items in the base price. And speaking of the small details, I did notice a little bit of the LED strip lights coming off the edge of the composite wall and then some of the trim having little gaps. This is pretty common for trailers that are in the larger RV network because they're not able to watch it as closely. But other than that, just looking at the trailer as a whole, I think it was a very well-made trailer. Now on to my cons. Where's the fan? Now, I don't think a fan is absolutely necessary and my family barely uses them, but I do think they have their place. Without a fan, when you're at lower elevations in the heat of summer, you can't force hot air out and bring cool air back in. And as for all you DIYers out there, this would be a really easy project to just add a fan to that rooftop window, that vent they have up there. The second con for me is build construction. This is built with glued and screwed panels instead of a single piece fiberglass shell that many of us composite junkies prefer. While having a single piece design like this bean trailer would be best for helping eliminate seam separation, it's not absolutely necessary. Even if your seams were to separate in a trailer like this, because the materials are composite, you wouldn't risk the chance of having rot, mildew, or other costly damage to your trailer like you would with traditional construction. You know, I'm always concerned about weight of these small camper trailers, and so I compare these to like a scamp. This is a 13 foot trailer that you can stand up in with bunks and it's coming in at 1,000 to 1,200 pounds. So then I'm shocked when I see something like the Hero Camper coming in at over 2,000 pounds. For me and for many of you, I think having a camper 1,800 pounds or less is going to be a lot easier on our tow vehicles. I mean, even for our family, I love something in that 1,200 to 1,600 range or when I have a smaller vehicle, even that 800 to 1,200 range. But anything less than this would be preferable. Now I'm sure you're eager to learn about the prices and how Hero Camper ended up in this situation. Just two years ago a Hero Camper was listed at this price. Fast forward to the last six months and it's incredible to see some of you in the Playing With Sticks community snagging these trailers for as low as 17000 Yes, you heard that right, $17,000. Take a look at this beauty. It's a far cry from your typical large, cobbled together RV. In fact, it's more reminiscent of top-notch brands like Escapot or Bean than a Bushwhacker. And the deals don't just end there. Today I found one online for $14,995. Bean Trailer, another company using composite materials, revealed last week in a comment on this channel that their direct material costs make up around 50% of the trailer's price. So a $30,000 bean trailer costs them about $15,000 to build. Are you starting to see where I'm going with this? In the comments I'm finding all over the internet, I've heard that Hero Campers have an outstanding reputation in Northern Europe. It all began when they sought to expand the trailer models into the North American market and they receive some misguided advice. So what went wrong? 
Before you know it, these hero campers were sitting in large RV lots next to giant campers that were made to last, what, four seasons, sold by salespeople who had no clue about teardrop trailers in the small camper industry. And even worse than that, just the association with the large RV industry alone made potential teardrop trailer buyers leery of this new camper to America. Hero Camper, a quality camper manufacturer, never even had a chance to prove themselves. Essentially, it was failure by association. And let's be honest, anyone could have made this mistake. My hope is that they can recover from the setback because they've genuinely crafted an impressive trailer. If composite trailers are new to you, I've got a range of videos linked below and on the screen to help you get acquainted with them. If you're on a tighter budget, but you're looking for a quality teardrop trailer, especially something composite, the time to act might be right now. As always, stay safe on the road and we'll catch you in the next episode.